as we approach the election, big tech censorship is more, more of a topic, more critical than ever. We know it's there. Someone who knows a ton about it is Facebook insider, Project Veritas collaborator, Ryan Hartwig, and he joins us now. Ryan, good to see you. Hey, thanks for having me, Drew. It's a pleasure to, to be here. Absolutely. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Uh, I'm not thrilled to talk about what we're talking about, but I'm thrilled to have you. Um, so I've got a ton of questions. We could, we could literally probably talk about enough stuff to, to make several shows out of it, but for the audience's sake, and my sake, but for the audience's sake, walk us back to, to when you were on the other side and when you first kind of started seeing this censorship of, of conservatives. Yeah, so I started as a content moderator on behalf of Facebook in March of 2018. And so from the get-go, I noticed something was off. Like my trainer was was talking about how Obama was her favorite president. Obama was her Patronus charm, to use a phrase from Harry Potter. Um, and so I was there for just under two years through February of 2020 when, when my company, Cognizant, ended the contract with Facebook. Uh, but yeah, even after the first year, I, I just kind of noticed some, a, weird, a few weird things, some bias, and I made a list of about 19 things. I wrote my uh, a local congressman here and didn't hear back. And so, yeah, as a content moderator, a moderator I reviewed you know multiple posts, pages. I deleted pages, groups, and um, I noticed a lot of bias, just blatant bias from Facebook. How how? <laughs> How big like are these content moderation teams? Obviously, you were with Cognizant, and there's other, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if there's other groups or not, but but how many ballpark content moderators are there? Because obviously, there's a ton of content out there. Yeah, yeah, there's so much content to take down and moderate. And uh, at the Phoenix location uh, here in, in Phoenix with Cognizant, there was roughly I would say, be, say between 800 and a thousand employees. And we were not the only contractor with Facebook. And we also had another location in Tampa. So, I mean, if you think about it that way, you got about, let's say, 1,000 people deleting or reviewing 200 pieces of content a day. It adds up very quickly. So even a small change in their policy has a multiplier effect and can affect posts and, and elections in a, in a big way. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, how... How does it work? I mean, is it as an algorithm that, that flags something for you as a content moderator that, oh, I should look at this batch? Or is it people scouring through? What's the, the methodology for what you as a content moderator are actually looking at or looking for? Yeah, the method they use to feed things into our queue, um, a lot of it's stuff that's actually been reported by someone. So we may get something in our screen that pops up and it says, you know, this is reported by Susie, uh, you know, Adam was calling her some a name, so he's directly directly reported by that user. But we also do get things that were flagged by the AI, so it's a combination um, of things. And and we have a policy that we have to study and learn that's like legalese that tells us if we would delete it or not. Um, but yeah, we it just you know one job at a time pops up. Then we have a tree where we have to decide how does this violate. And there's a list of about 20 categories. So. You know, terrorism is the top of the list, obviously, and there's, you know, bullying is a violation. So even if it violates two of those, like bullying and terrorism, we would delete it for the higher violation. And 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 it's up to the individual content moderator to make that determination of how it fits within that tree. Yeah, it's up to us. Um, you know, they tell us to think with our head, not our heart. Um, and so we try to be objective, but, you know, as humans, there's a lot of subject subjectivity and we, we get uh, graded, so we, our Q quality assurance department, QA, they grade about 50. So if we review 1,000 jobs in a week, they review about 50 of those that we would possibly get wrong or get audited on. Okay. And, I, and how, like, how would you break down the percentage? Obviously, this isn't scientific because you don't have all of the personnel records. for. But, but within, like, your group of 800 to 1,000 in Phoenix, Yeah. how vocal – were people about their dislike for Trump, dislike for conservatives, Christians, et cetera. Uh, it was, was it pretty prominent? Yeah, it was, it was pretty prominent. I, mean, I, would, I would say that the, yeah, there, there was some, yeah, they were, they're pretty outspoken. Uh, there was a, there was a few of us that were conservative. Like I was sitting next to a, a military vet, a couple of military veterans and we were, they were open, very open about their conservative views. So honestly, there, it was a very, very open workplace because when you talk about, you know, very uh, 
discussing gross themes or sexuality, you tend to have very open, frank conversations with your coworkers. But I, I would say that the trend was that it was more acceptable to t- talk openly about your liberal views than conservative views. I felt like that was more, it was more appropriate and allowed. Sure. No, I have, well, that's just kind of the, <laughs> the landscape across the country these days, whether you work at a, at some other corporation, whether you, it, wherever you are, people, people tend to be more scared because they, they, they fear losing their jobs. Um, it's, and it's, it's crazy. I, I'm curious about this. I wasn't even going to necessarily ask about it, but, but in terms of the reach as, as a publisher, as a content creator on Facebook and, and multiple other platforms, there's very clear the, the process and methodology that we take for a number of sites that, that I'm involved with is the exact same with, within a margin of error. But we see absolute changes in reach and engagement over periods where you're, you're being shadow banned or squelched or throttled down, whatever terminology you want to use. Is it the content moderators who are playing a part in that? Is it, is it the AI? What, what's going on there? Because I'd love to, to figure out what happens on those weeks where we just get crushed. For no reason. Yeah. Um, what we do, we, I mean, we would mark certain content a certain way. So it, we, we do some of that, um, a little bit of that. So for example, if someone's making a joke about something that's inappropriate, like if someone has a disability, like if we were, if we were making fun of, fun of Hillary Clinton two years ago or th- four years ago, whatever, when, when she was falling down steps, uh, there's a part of the policy that it's called cruel and cruel and insensitive. And that would kind of limit the, the distrib- uh, distribution of, of a meme that made fun of Hillary Clinton for falling down the steps because technically she might have a disability. Um, so there's some of that going on. Um, there's not like a dial where we just dial down conservative content, not, not that I specifically had. I'm sure, I'm sure they have a dial for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we also have a team that's called Brand Safety that would categorize ads according to the, the politics of the ad. So that may also play into that. Um, so we did some of that, but there was nothing that was too super explicit. And I think they they do that on purpose. And of course, we were the contractors, so we had access to a lot of their information and their methodologies. Methodologies, but I'm sure there's something at a higher level that's going on just yeah, with a that. Of, a lot of need to know type stuff, I'm sure. Well, I mean, what's uh, what's the best way for for publishers? Uh, look, the 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 reality is this, these are private companies, whether you're talking Facebook, Twitter, what have you, you know, there's, there's a bias. We get like, people should get that. If you don't get that people that's happening, but, but yeah. there's a bias. What's, the, what's, what's the safest way to play the game? So you ensure your message still gets out or, or is it increasingly just going to be more and more difficult to get it out because of, of the resistance that's on the other side? Well, um, I think the way, best way to message, get your message out, I think there is still a way to do it. Um, and there's some YouTube channels in Brazil, actually. I was in Brazil last week, and there's some channels that st- are able to get through the algorithm. And you know, it might be the titles. It, it's it's very tricky. And, and people on YouTube also you know, experience the same thing. Um, I think it's still possible. Right now, they're clamping down very, very hard because of the election. But I really think it's just going to get worse. I mean, we had a civic audit done by... Uh, the Covington Law Firm, Facebook had one done with with uh, former Senator John Kyle. And so it's funny because I saw some like surface level changes from Facebook. So they changed the way that they made exceptions to make it appear like they were being more fair. But I think deep down they they really are just, just clamping down. So it, I think I think it's going to be really tough. I think it's possible. And I've given some tips to people on how to avoid uh, the algorithm, but it's it's getting worse. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I, do you think moving pa- up to the election, as, as you and I both said here, it's going to be it's going to be worse because obviously they want this to go a certain way. They want America to go a certain way, regardless of whether it's an election year or not. But do you think they continue to double down? I mean, Jack Dorsey and Twitter, to his credit, like I don't like I hate Twitter. Uh, I'm on yeah. it, but I don't do much there. I, I don't like it. But I will say this. At least they have the balls to come out and, and be more open about their Democrat values. Facebook yeah. keeps hiding behind this saying, no, 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 we don't do it when it's, I mean, literally the, the Joe Biden could see that they're doing it. And he's not very sharp right now. Like, do you think <laughs> this gets worse though? Do you think that they double down and eventually say, you know what? Screw you conservatives. We're just gonna, we're just gonna have at it and, and block more <laughs> and more. Yeah. I think they're, um, they're doubling down. And it's funny because the, the media would have you believe that, uh, you know, because Facebook did, Facebook did to their credit um, also 
they allowed political ads and weren't uh, immediately, you know, fact checking political ads back er earlier this year. And, and they got a lot of flack for that from the left. And, you know, Zuckerberg met with Trump early last fall. And so to the left, the mainstream media now, all of a sudden, you know, uh, Zuckerberg is a Trump supporter, um, which is for nothing further from the truth. Um, so, yeah, I think I think they're going to double down. I think at this point they've already shown their true colors. I mean, you saw that recent video from Zuckerberg about preparing us for the election. My biggest thing is what the hell is Facebook doing with our elections? Like if I, in Arizona state law, if I go to the sandwich shop the day of, after election day and I have my, my sticker that said I voted, they had a deal at one point, this local deli, deli had a deal where they gave you a free sandwich if you showed your, your uh, I voted sticker. And that's a violation of state law. So if that's against the law, once again, what the hell is Facebook doing involved in our elections? Yeah. Well, and not only are they involved, but they have so much power. It's scary how much power these big companies have. And, and they know it. Yeah. But it's important that we know it. And there's people like you who are sharing the facts and how they're doing things behind, pushing back and saying, no, 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 legally, you can't do this. You can't do that. Uh, and it's important that the rest of us get wise to that because this, this, this is all very real stuff. And, and we're dealing with it and we're dealing with it in particular on the conservative side of the aisle. Uh, and it's going to be important if, if people want to get their message out for this election and for future elections and for, for anything and everything they want to talk about. It's important that we that we understand this and then we fix this to the extent possible. Uh, well, listen, yeah. Ryan, we've got to go. But thank you so much for being here. We appreciate uh, everything that you've done. We'd love to have you back. And, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty to talk about between now and, and November 3rd. So, again, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. You got it. All right, folks, you can follow Ryan on Twitter. You saw his, his screen, uh, his, his name there um, pop up multiple times on the screen. Be sure to go do that if you're not already. Always interesting stuff going on with him. Like I said, we will have him back.